Algebra 2 Cram, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Sign of Trigonometric Functions, Concept Number 8, Quadrant 1 and the Reference Angle. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim to none, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 Master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect test scores into a new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2. If I could stick every single math student with a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I probably would. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order this complete cram session and get your healthy dose of inner mathematical genius. You have friends, pairs, classmates, colleagues who could also use a boost as well. So tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can get a boost, okay? You'll be glad you spread the word because they'll make great study buddies. Last but not least, the concept of cramming often gets a bad rap. But what people are actually thinking of is hurrying, which is a result of fear and can consequently be destructive. We're not hurrying here, we're cramming. There's a difference. Hurrying is jam-packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your mental spiritual DNA over a tiny amount of elapsed time, whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in an organized way in what seems like an instant. So let's delve into the concept of quadrant one and the reference angle, okay? Standard position and reference angles. For an angle theta in standard position, what is the reference angle theta ref or theta sub ref? I'll give you a moment to think and definitely, definitely press pause if you need to. All right, so hopefully you are able to properly define theta ref, but if not, that's okay. And before um, organizing this concept, we first have to establish what standard position is. And if you had ordered this complete cram session, you would have known because this is what we covered in um, concept number one, okay? But if not, that's fine. I won't hold it against you. Let's do a quick overview of standard position. For an angle theta in standard position, the vertex is located on the, at the origin at zero on your x, y, Cartesian coordinate plane. The initial side ray is on the positive x axis and the terminal side ray terminates in quadrant one. Okay, and notice that this is an acute angle. When I say acute, I mean it's bound by the quadrantal angles zero degrees and 90 degrees. And just in case you forgot what the meaning of quadrantal angles are, they're angles that terminate, whose terminal side ray ends on either the x axis in the positive or negative direction or the y axis in the positive or negative direction. So some examples are, as I previously mentioned, 0 and 90 degrees, as well as 270 degrees. 360, de well, two, no, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees, etc. if you were to continue around in counterclockwise revolutions, okay? You increase in increments of 90 degrees for each quadrant. I think you can see that, or you can even go backwards and say negative 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 270 degrees, etc. All right, so that's that. We're going to call the terminal side ray R, R being short for the ray. And um, yeah, oh, okay, let's establish a quick point. Let's say we arbitrarily choose this point P along our terminal side ray R, and we cut it off right here. It's no longer a ray, it becomes of ray, it becomes a line segment. 
And then we can also do the same to our initial side array. We can say that it goes to the extent of this x coordinate x. And if we want to get fancy and delve into some trigonometry, we can say that this ray rises to the level of y by resolving it into our x, its x and y component. That's not our main focus here, but the reason why we did this is because you're going to notice something about the signs of x and y. The um, signs of the trigonometric values depend on the signs of x and y, okay? And the reason why that is, is because x and y in the quadrant in which the terminal side of the angle is found will have the effect on the sign of any trigonometric value. So, for example, if you're in quadrant 1 or 4, x is going to have a positive value because it corresponds to the positive x-axis. But if you're in quadrants 2 or 3, x is going to have a negative value because it, ex it corresponds to the negative x-axis. And you can follow the similar line of reasoning for y. If you're in quadrants 1 and 2, the y coordinate value will be positive because it terminates, um, well, it corresponds rather to the positive y axis. But if you're in quadrants three or four, the y coordinate will have um, a negative value because it corresponds to quadrants three and four. And you'll see this clearly um, if you order the complete session and you take a look at what happens when we go beyond quadrant one and we delve into quadrant two, three, and four, okay? But you have to order the complete session to see that. But let's continue with what we're doing here. Although the um, x and y, or size x and y, you can say, which is really not a measurement of the side, but rather um, the value of the coordinate, R is not a coordinate. R is a distance, and it's measured as such. The magnitude of R equals the square root of the x-coordinate squared plus the y-coordinate squared, okay? And um, regardless of the sign or what quadrant you're in, for x or y, R will always come out being positive, a positive value, because you're squaring the terms to get rid of negative values, okay? So squaring and then taking the square root is just a simple way to get rid of any negative sign. And this is basically a play on the distance formula. That's why standard position is so convenient because one of your points is 0, 0, which never has to be written. It can be automatically implied when it comes to things like writing out the distance formula, okay? Alrighty then, and I think, yeah, that's about it. So now for finalizing the point that we came here to make, the reference angle. So for any angle in standard position, the reference angle theta ref is going to be the positive acute angle that theta makes with the f, not the f axis. <laughs> the x-axis, okay? And for quadrant one, this is what that looks like. So we have our acute angle and it's making um, a positive acute angle with the x-axis, all right? So for quadrant one, theta ref or theta reference is simply equivalent to theta. And the reason why we even need to care about the concept of a reference angle is because when you're calculating trigonometric values such as sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, you name it, or when you're calculating the inverse tangent, inverse cosine, inverse sine, the angle value that you're going to get is actually the reference angle or your calculator is assuming you're calculating for the reference angle, your graphing calculator that is, and, or scientific calculator. Well, if, you, if it's assuming this, 
you'll have to make a few manipulations if you're not in quadrant one. Let's say you're in quadrant two, three, four. And we're about to explore this concept soon by going on to the next few cram sessions. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order this complete cram session. And our overall answer is, is that in quadrant one, theta reference is simply equivalent to theta, the positive acute angle made with the x-axis, okay? All right.